It's a healthy Friday, so Health Friday conversation continues. This time we want to talk about the dangers of smoking and the vagaries of attempting to quit smoking for those that are already smokers. Our guest is in the studio. We'll welcome him shortly by giving him the day's proverb. Yes, indeed. This is our final proverb from the country of Libya. Yes. The night has ears and the day has eyes. The night has ears, the day has eyes. Yes. Night has ears, day has eyes. Mm. The night has ears, the day has eyes. Dr. Michael Karaoke, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you. Welcome to the hot seat. Thank you. When you <laughs> hear that proverb, do you relate? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. The night has ears and the day has eyes. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's rather clear that uh, during the day you are likely to see a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the night where uh, you'll have to depend on your ears like the bats do. Mm. <laughs> uh -huh. so watch out what you're doing during the day because you'll be seen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And watch out what you do during the night because it'll be hard. Be hard. <laughs> Either way, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> be careful what you're doing, wherever you are. Daktari, you are very many things. You're a pediatrician. You are, you know, what else are you? A researcher. Uh, what else are you? Very many things, Buana. Eh. Yes, hmm? yes. Um, I'm Dr. Kariuki Maiko. Mm. I'm a pediatrician. That is where my passion is. Mm -hmm. I take care of children who are sick and uh, bring, restore health. Uh, we all know that uh, God gives health and uh, he uses us as uh, pediatricians and doctors generally to restore their health. Mm -hmm. This is a very noble profession because we know the language of children. A child will not tell you I'm sick. Uh, but when you bring one to a pediatrician, they'll be able to figure out what mm. is happening to this child. Mm. On the other hand, I'm an epidemiologist. An epidemiologist is a scientist who essentially deals with uh, uh, the study of uh, distribution uh, of disease and how disease patterns you know, come about and uh, how do we develop policies, how do we implement measures uh, to curb diseases. Mm. And uh, these are specialists who are very critical, especially when we have outbreaks or when you have a certain matter of public health importance that needs to be brought on board. Uh, for the public to know exactly how do we prevent ourselves from falling sick mm. and uh, with that comes with the research mm -hmm. yes so those those are my that's who you are exactly and you champion there for public health and uh, the health of children exactly in the public space talking about research a new research from the institute of psychiatry psychology and neuroscience at king's college in london has found that the use of vaping products rather than smoking leads to a substantial reduction in exposure to toxicants that promote cancer, lung disease, and cardiovascular diseases. This independent report commissioned by the Office of Health Improvement and Disparities in the Department of Health and Social Care represents the most comprehensive review of the risk of vaping to date. It found that while vaping is not risk-free, particularly for people who have never smoked, it poses a small fraction of the health risks of smoking in the short to medium term. Now, we're having this conversation with you today because of that issue of smoking and vaping. It's been a public debate in Kenya for a while in terms of are we allowing vaping? Is it a good thing to do? Is it uh, wise to allow people to vote to vape freely? Should vaping be considered under the Tobacco Control Act? There's no tobacco product in vaping and all those things and e-cigarettes and such. Now, from your point of view, the 
smoking and the dangers of smoking are clear, are they not? Yes, thank, thank you very much. Uh, just to begin off, uh, one may wonder what, what is a pediatrician doing with smoking? Mm -hmm. And uh, just to put into perspective, uh, uh, smoking uh, cigarettes or what we call combustible cigarettes is one of those uh, things in health that uh, is extremely detrimental to uh, both the unborn child and the child who is born and growing up. We've had a lot of premature deliveries, children born with congenital issues, uh, children born with dependence because the mothers uh, have been exposed to smoking cigarettes. And uh, definitely uh, our purview in pediatrics goes all the way to young adults. And uh, smoking has uh, a huge detrimental effect on uh, the health mm. of whoever is using that product and whoever is uh, exposed to the smoke or what we call the secondhand smoke. And of course, this is a gap. Uh, that needs to be very well uh, elucidated and brought out because uh, all along we've had a lot of measures to try and uh, tell people quit smoking. Uh, but uh, studies are showing, uh, especially the tobacco atlas that was released the other day, mm. which, which is a paper essentially, that uh, smoking in lower and middle income countries mm. is rising. And smoking in the developed countries is dropping. Mm -hmm. So one wonders, why is this the case? Yeah, why is it that uh, in Kenya, for example, we have 3 million smokers? In actual sense, the correct figure is about 10%, which is of the about 4.5 4, 4 of the adults. Okay. Of the adults. And uh, they smoke both uh, factory made cigarettes and homemade cigarettes. Mm. And uh, if the trend continues, then we are likely to have an epidemic, mm. uh, which epidemiologists usually deal with, of a tobacco, what we call a tobacco epidemic. Mm. So we need to ask ourselves, why are the smoking rates going up and uh, the smoking rates in developed countries uh, going down? And now that is where these products uh, come in. Whereby we are saying uh, so many researches that have been done out there, uh, starting off, let's say, with England, uh, Public Health England, they faced the same situation years back. Mm. And they sat down and asked themselves, how can we reduce our smoking rates? Uh, 75,000 of our citizens in England die every year due to smoking-related illnesses. Mm. In Kenya here, our figures are about 8,000. And we believe the figures in Kenya could even be more. We are under-reporting. Mm. And uh, they commissioned several studies uh, over the few decades ago to try and find out how can we help our smokers quit. On the other hand, uh, World Health Organization uh, did also recognize that indeed smoking is a problem mm. and smokers and the general public need to be protected. And uh, they came up with the Framework Convention for Tobacco Control, of which Kenya is a signatory. And uh, they came up with five key messages, what we call empower. Mm. Uh, we need to monitor our tobacco products. We need to protect the smoke, the, those who don't smoke, especially second-hand product. Mm -hmm. uh, o is for we need to offer help to, 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 to those who are smoking to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, w is uh, we need to warn uh, people on the dangers of smoking. Mm -hmm. And the last R is we need to raise taxes <laughs> on tobacco products. As a deterrent. Mm -hmm. As a deterrent. Mm -hmm. Over the decades, we have seen that uh, the strategies, yes, uh, they are working, but uh, the implementation on offering the smoker help has lagged. Uh, so the O? The O has uh, lagged behind. Mm. 
in fact, it's postulated that the implementation of the O is mm. less than 20% well, of the all the member states. The R must have been the highest. R is the highest. <laughs> Course, R is taxes. the highest mm. because taxes <laughs> are being raised and all that. Mm. And the WHO came up with this. Now, how do we assist these smokers quit? There are various medical ways of assisting smokers quit. Uh, and more so after WHO recognized that uh, smoking is a disease mm. that causes dependence, just like alcoholism. You become hooked to the cigarettes because of the nicotine. And uh, you just can't tell somebody one morning, stop smoking. Mm. They won't. In fact, like in Kenya, uh, of every hundred smokers who smoke, 30 of them attempt to quit smoking. And only seven succeed. What? Mm -hmm. Yes, only 7% succeed. Mm. And... Uh, there is a very high likelihood that of those seven, they will relapse in back into smoking six months, one year down the line. And the WHO has various modalities that they recommend, which have been adopted by all the party nations. We have nicotine replacement therapies, behavioral treatments, we have pharmacotherapy, we have drugs that actually assist smokers to quit. But at the end of the day, when we evaluate the gains that have been made, we seem not to be moving. In fact, uh, we, we are moving several steps back. And that is what these developed nations realize, that yes, we have tried to implement this. What else can we do? What other alternatives can we do? In about 2003, a Chinese pharmacist by the name of Dr. Hans uh, Locke, uh, had been smoking cigarettes for more than four decades. His father died out of lung cancer because of smoking. And uh, when the pharmacist sat down by himself, he asked himself, yes, I have used the WHO recommended ways of stopping smoking, but they are not assisting me. And which are these ways? Nicotine replacement therapies. He was using something we call a nicotine patch which is an elastoplast embedded with nicotine. Then you stick it on your skin. It releases the nicotine in smaller doses. Mm. So he had used that for several years and he was not smoking. He had combined that with behavioral therapy. Then he asked himself, what can I do? There is a, a critical behavioral aspect that uh, I seem to miss. And with all his medical knowledge, he was able to develop the first e-cigarette. An e-cigarette is a device that looks like a cigarette that has pure nicotine in various milligrams mm. that is heated by the device. So it has a heater. Mm. Once the nicotine is heated, it vaporizes, becomes mm. vapor. And uh, the f good pharmacist was able now to inhale the vapors in what we call metered doses. Mm -hmm. So he started with a certain amount, he went on reducing, and the method worked. He was able to stop. And he was able to stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, later he sold the patent for 10 billion shillings. So, uh, Dr. Ari, are we saying that for smoking a cigarette, that the act of lighting a match and then the smoke is what causes harm? Because if the nicotine is still present in the e-cigarette or in vape which we will talk about in a bit if the nicotine is still present which as it is in a cigarette so is it the act of smoking that causes problems yes absolutely the act of burning that burning. cigarette yeah. or what we call combustion mm. when you burn and light up uh, that cigarette it releases more than 5000 uh, products, uh, one of which is <coughs> nicotine. And all the studies, even by WHO and leading scientists, have made one conclusion, mm. that these products are carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. These are the products that 
cause you the cardiovascular diseases, mm. cause you the lung issues, bring up the cancer and all that. And more specifically, we need to understand that WHO has clearly stated that nicotine is not carcinogenic. So nicotine is not carcinogenic. Nicotine is not carcinogenic. So what what in the cigarette then is carcinogenic? Yes, I can just mention a few and things. And this is in have. tobacco. Mm. Correct. Once you burn that cigarette, mm. it will release one of the biggest products that we know as tar, the black substance, mm. which will rest in your lungs and cause a lot of modulation changes in the lungs leading to cancer. We also have uh, what we call tobacco-specific cancer-causing agents. They are only found in tobacco. Mm. We call them tobacco-specific nitrosamines. We have a lot of carbon monoxide that uh, you put into your lungs when you burn that cigarette. We have formaldehyde and so many other chemicals that uh, will end up harming your health. And that is the science that have been revolving to try and assist smokers quit. If this guy is hooked to this cigarette, how can we get him off the combustible cigarette and eventually make him not smoke? So what do people get hooked to? The when nicotine. They... The nicotine is what they get hooked to. Which is not harmful. Which is not carcinogenic. Okay. Which is not carcinogenic. They get hooked up to nicotine through the cigarette. For your information, one piece of cigarette uh, locally sold has about 10 milligrams of nicotine. When you burn it, you consume about 1 to 2 milligrams. So if you take 10 cigarettes, the eventual amount that you will get up and you will be hooked will be 10% of each cigarette value. We have some cigarettes. We have some cigars. Cigars have one of the highest nicotine levels. Cigars, cigarillos, they, they, they range up to 35 milligrams per cigar. And we know because the cigar is big, uh, the kind of tobacco they use to make the cigar, and uh, they are all categorized as tobacco products with all these bad components. How do you then distinguish or categorize the elements within the cigarette, cigarette or cigar that causes harm from the chemicals that they use in processing them? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it, it boils down to how the tobacco is made, which has been studied uh, for so many years. And uh, the bottom line is once tobacco is farmed, it is harvested. Mm. Once it is harvested, it has to be dried. Now, there are various ways of drying that tobacco. The most dangerous way of drying tobacco is either you smoke it, mm -hmm. smoking, or you put it in a kiln. A kiln is a hot enclosure mm -hmm. that will dry it up through heat. Mm -hmm. Then you can sun dry. Just uh, put it on the sun, it takes time, or you air dry. Mm -hmm. Once drying is done, the tobacco is fermented. Why do we ferment tobacco? And this is done by all tobacco manufacturing companies, even at home, those who grow tobacco. The reason they ferment is to extract nicotine out of the leaf. The higher the fermentation, the higher the nicotine levels. Now, during that fermentation, that's when now you get your tobacco-specific cancer-causing agents because the tobacco is invaded by bacteria and so many other things. Some people even add ash. If you talk to guys who farm tobacco, they'll tell you once we dry, we, 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 we ferment it like the way we ferment uh, bananas to ripen. Mm -hmm. Then they add ash. That ash also is having carcinogenic substances. So all these processes will end up bringing more and more and more dangerous uh, products into that tobacco. And of course, uh, once the chemical analysis is done, we'll find that uh, that particular tobacco that has undergone that process 
the moment you light it up as a cigarette, mm. either homemade or bought, you will consume these products. So these are scientific methods that have been able to analyze all these mm. harmful substances. And just to put into perspective, Western countries realize that. Mm. Uh, especially Sweden was leading in that. And what did they do? They said, we will never smoke our tobacco to dry. We will never put it in a kiln to dry. We will only sun dry our tobacco. Mm. Number two, we will never ferment our mm -hmm. tobacco. By just doing that. So how do they extract the nicotine? If fermentation is what it extracts. is there, but now the nicotine levels are extremely low. The nicotine, the moment you dry tobacco, it will have nicotine. But as you ferment, the percentage Increases. goes higher and higher. And uh, they, they say, no, we'll never do that. And by so doing, they develop their first tobacco product, which had uh, less of low those, nicotine. It had low nicotine. Then it had less of those tobacco-specific nitrosamines, and that is what we call the Swedish mm. uh, snus. And uh, through that, even though that type of tobacco, which is a smokeless tobacco, which you chew and put in your mouth or inhale, it is still carcinogenic because you'll end up consuming more of the product to extract as much nicotine as possible. Eh. Okay, let's take a break. We'll talk about then what do people need to do to a avoid getting hooked into smoking and those who are smokers to successfully stop smoking. So we've been told out of every hundred people in this country uh, who are smokers, 30 will try to quit smoking, but only seven of them will succeed in quitting smoking. But even those seven have a high risk of relapsing and going back into smoking. So now... It's half past nine. This is the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Dr. Michael Karaoke, public health and child health advocate, is our guest today in the Health Friday conversation. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Dr. Michael Karaoke, public health and child health advocate, is here with us in the studio, being hosted by me. Myself is Eric Latif. My lady is Ndu Oko. And the gentleman is C.T. Muga. You know, the discussion around tobacco is something that has been around with us for a while. And what we call big tobacco, most in the West that you mentioned, uh, over the years have actually been forced by courts to admit to something that they for the longest time denied, manipulating cigarettes so that they are more addictive. Now, stringent measures were put in Yes, there was compensation that people got paid. My question is, in Africa, in our part of the world, do we have such strict oversight? Because we do have tobacco manufacturers in the country, and we do have smokers. Yes, indeed, uh, uh, Africa, we have smokers, and statistics are showing that uh, the number is actually increasing. As, as, as we move along, uh, yes, uh, that uh, big tobacco way back did uh, aggressively advertise cigarettes, uh, did aggressively make them more enticing. And after so many years, uh, through science, it was definitely found that uh, most of the sick people, uh, their illnesses, uh, who are smoking were related to tobacco and uh, they ended up being compensated. In Africa, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag of reactions because uh, uh, one, uh, we have governments, let me talk about Kenya and, and other African countries that are parties to uh, the Framework Convention for Tobacco Control, which has really tried to do a lot of regulations and uh, be able to bring down the number of smokers uh, in, the, in this country. Yes, the regulations are there. Uh, we have stringent measures. As I said, uh, M-Power is a strategy that uh, is being used by countries, including raising taxes. One may sit back and ask, why are we not banning tobacco? Why can't it just be banned? 
And uh, the answer is uh, very simple. Burning has not worked. Uh, the world is fraught with risks. Mm. Uh, people are risk takers. I mean, people will do so many things. I mean, people will drive cars. That's why we have safety belts that were derived. Uh, people will continue engaging in, 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 in carnal knowledge, and that's why we have condoms that were derived to try and bring down the harm mm. uh, so that we don't end up with so many people dying. For the governments, they derive revenue. Uh, from, mm -hmm. from, from tobacco companies and all that. Uh, uh, WHO has tried to advocate for, for, for the banning, but it doesn't work, even in US, even in UK. And uh, nobody wants to talk about banning because it does not work. In South Africa, for example, during COVID, they banned tobacco for six months. And uh, what did that uh, end up with? We ended up with the tobacco price is shooting by 230%. Only 9% of smokers quit smoking. Mm. Uh, and they, it's postulated about half relapsed back. And uh, despite all these measures by uh, these countries and all that, it, it's high time we have a paradigm shift, educate the public more and offer smokers a solution to quit smoking. And of course, uh, keep on agitating the government agencies, the Tobacco Control Board, NACAD, the Ministry of Health, to try and bring on board uh, these smokers. Like the U UK did. UK came up with a stop smoking services department mm -hmm. that any smoker who wants to quit is referred to. In Kenya, we don't have such a department. Mm. They say the cessation services are integrated in health, which does not work. It's not true. It doesn't work. Mm. It doesn't work. If you walk into a hospital, I've been a doctor, I mean, you take history of a patient, yes, I smoke, how many? Two packets a day. It ends there. That's the end of that conversation. It ends there. So we need a stop smoking services department to assist these smokers quit. And uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. I mean, UK is doing it. Uh, Canada is doing it. New Zealand is doing it. We can no longer apply the principle of quit or die mm. for smokers. We must offer. We must walk the walk the journey with them. Absolutely. And Why? What because, are these alternatives then? Yes, because mm. smoking is an illness. It causes physical and psychological dependence. You are hooked to that nicotine. That means you're an addict. Absolutely, you're an addict. You can't tell, for example, someone who is hooked to alcohol to stop. Or die. No, they, you must give them, or must, cocaine. must send them to a rehab, must tell them we need this. So for smokers, we need a very good strategy. And despite all the efforts that have been made, I mean, uh, smoking causes diseases that can easily be prevented. Mm. Smoking is the leading cause of non-communicable diseases, which are preventable. And the question we need to ask, why are these diseases continuously going up? Why are they not, despite all the measures that have been put? The Let solution, you, Dr. Ari, yes. Uh, even before you just get to the solution, we have seen, you know, the introduction of st stricter laws on smoking with the Tobacco Control Act, which talks about, you know, what the cigarette manufacturer ought to do in pastoring the warning that is bigger than everything else on the cigarette packet. Uh, controlling where people smoke. You must have those areas. Those kind of regulations, from your observation of it, they had an impact in reducing the number of new people who are becoming smokers. Yes, they have uh, reduced, uh, but not to the expectations that uh, we would want. Remember, those strategies are anchored in the empower. And uh, out of the empower, offering uh, solutions or offering help to the smokers is the least implemented. Is the least implemented. Mm. And we are seeing more and more people as part of the tobacco atlas in lower middle income countries, smoking going up. In this country, we have almost a million youth who are smoking cigarettes. Mm. The smoking decline uh, that we would anticipate 
is not happening. Okay. The smoking decline that we would anticipate uh, is not happening. But remember, in the West, part of the problem with smoking and smokers was the advertisement, the lure. Yep. And the advertisement, whether if you're talking about what we call social vices like smoking or drinking, the target is usually younger people. So it made you cooler. It made you whatever it is that you think would be appropriate in today's terminology. Now, if you look at a packet of cigarettes, like now the advertisement, the packet tells you that it is dangerous to your health. Some say it kills. Yes. But the problem is, how do you get people who want to start smoking to actually not even start? Because there's this question of peer pressure, what people do, and what it is that they think makes them fit in. The social issues surrounding, as I said, all these vices. Because stopping it or putting laws that prohibit it, the Americans tried in the 1923 to stop people from actually drinking, buying, production, selling of, of uh, alcohol. How did that work? Same thing. Prices just shot up. People started Ill Ill illicitly producing it. Are we saying then that with all these standards and regulations, do we have a position where we are at a point where cigarette smoking or no, cigarette production can actually be put in place, but with the proviso that all these harmful additives that are found in it are reduced significantly? Is that are we saying that that is where we are headed? Because it can't be one thing; it can it must be that, and it must be other things so that. Because there will be people who want to smoke. You can't ban tobacco pro production. Or you can't ban cigarettes. So, is making them less harmful a path, even as you think of other ways of reducing, uh, uh, not smoking, but the harm that it causes? Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, harm reduction is the way to go. Uh, the UK, for example, has set 2030 to be smoke-free. So they actually have a target. They are saying, yes, we want by 2030, mm. all the citizens in this country who smoke combustible cigarettes should have quit. How are they doing it? By harm reduction strategies, assisting smokers, continuing with public health education, enhancing regulation, enhancing the smoking rules. Uh, you can't smoke in public. You should not smoke indoors. Of course, the issue of taxes is also there. But now they have shifted. They have a paradigm shift. And they have actually set a target by 2030. They are already seeing the target may not work by 2030. So they, ma they probably think that by 2037, mm -hmm. we don't have such targets in this country. We don't have targets to say we want Kenya to be smoke-free by this year. And that is why we are calling upon this Stop Smoking Services Department. To off, the key thing is you must walk the journey with smokers. Then uh, as you walk the journey with smokers, they will tell their story. Mm. And that is what has been found to be the biggest deterrent into recruiting new smokers. But the moment you leave them to their own devices, new and new smokers will be recruited mm. so all the strategies are working for 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 the empire but offering solution and that is what the uk is focusing on mm. that research you quoted from the institute of psychiatry uh, psychology and neuroscience was an independent research they wanted to evaluate what are the effects of these products mm. and one of the things they said is that including other scientists dr khan has been leading science in the uk and their conclusion was we must assist our smokers to quit if we want to be smoke free by 2030 we must work with them as we move walk on. the journey and the same them. strategy actually applies even with the hiv aids you must walk with the infected mm. the journey so that you reduce the number of infections from spreading, even as you target those who are not infected. Mm. So, so is the goal twofold then? Because we're still, I mean, essentially we're dealing with an issue of addiction. There's the addiction to the nicotine, isn't it? Yes. And so even with the other interventions that have been arrived at over the years, a nicotine patch, what we're seeing with vaping, etc., there is still the dependence 
on the nicotine. There's still the addiction. But is what we are saying then quit this act of burning the cigarette so that we stop the threat of these diseases, cancer and such? Or is it, is it a fourfold thing? Deal with the addiction as well as stop the smoking? Yes, it's a twofold thing because uh, uh, harm reduction strategies uh, work this way. Mm. We get the smoker, we assist the smoker to quit. Our goal is to even get them off the alternatives. How? By introducing these products that are being used in UK, like the VIPs, which are center stage in assisting smokers to quit. And mm. we have seen... Uh, uh, even the Department of Health, the Stop Smoking Services Department, they are advocating that these smokers need this prescription from specialists. And just like this Chinese uh, pharmacist mm. did, he tapered down the dose. So you start, you assess what is the level of addiction. Mm -hmm. So this person, we can start with nicotine doses of 20 for this number of days. Then we drop to 10, we drop to 5, and we eventually win them off uh, smoking. So it is double-edged. The whole, whole aim is not to have this smoker use the alternative in perpetuity. Yeah. So it should not also be available off the counter, over the counter. Those are now the strategies. Uh, for example, Because Japan, if it's available over the counter, then... Yes. You <laughs> for example, <laughs> Japan, mm. you can only buy a nicotine product through prescription. In this country, if you walk outside here, you'll find all sorts of, and manner of products yep. accessible to children, accessible to the young. Why? Because we don't want to regulate these products. And we are calling the government. We need a regulation. If you walk into any social place, you can attest you will find so many types of vaping products. Yep. Right now, as we speak, more and more youth are being recruited into vaping. Why? Because we don't have a policy direct direction on these products. Mm. We, we, we are not educating our public enough to tell them, if you are not a smoker, don't start vaping. Vaping is only meant for those people who want to quit smoking. Can you get addicted from through vaping? Absolutely, yes. We were surprised uh, the other day we did some research. Some of these products have nicotine levels that are lethal. The WHO recommended nicotine dose that is lethal is between 30 to 50 milligrams. Some of these vaping products have 100 milligrams. What? Extremely lethal. And they are being sold out there. There is zero regulation. And uh, we need now to say we need to regulate these vaping products Young people in this country, young ladies, young men are picking up vaping to look cool. And some of those products are not cheap. They can range from anywhere from 3000 to 50000 mm. So the more expensive the product you have, the cooler you look. And now we are telling uh, Kenyans uh, that should not happen. We are calling upon the Tobacco Control Board, Ministry of Health, and, and Nakada, we need a structure. Those products, those alternative products are meant for smokers to assist them to quit. To quit. You know, 90%, according to research, 90% of smokers worldwide begin smoking before the age of 18. The why people are attracted, the what is used to attract people to smoking in their youth when they're actually far more vulnerable and their decision-making process have not matured, what is done to reduce this? Because they are snared at that particular point in time. And then when we see them as adults, the harm was done a long time ago. What we are then dealing with are the consequences of decisions that were made much, much earlier. Yes, uh, in pediatrics, we say the brain fully develops at 25. Uh, even, even, even in our setup, we still see anyone who is less than 25 as, as being a pediatric age group. Mm. And that is the truth. Most of these smokers begin before the age of 25. When their brain is developing, when their brain is developing new connections, what we call synapses, and 
when they start smoking, or they live in an environment where the father is smoking, or they live in an environment where their friends are smoking, that smoke, the moment is inhaled, the nicotine binds to specific brain receptors called mm. nicotine receptors. Mm. And now these people start craving for these products. They start craving for these products over and over until now they fully get hooked up and uh, getting them uh, out of smoking becomes a big, big problem. And that's why we are saying we need a target to have a smoke-free country by which year we need to. And how do we walk that path? We need a very clear strategy. Otherwise, more and more young people will get hooked up. Mm. Will get hooked up. The moment these mm. alternative products are not reachable Related. to the smokers, they will continue smoking. Mm. As a doctor, and well, doctors belong to associations which yes. are tied with their specialties. Now, if we know that young people are ensnared at an early age, has there been an attempt? Uh, have, have, there, have there been moves to ensure that the education sector, which is where you can capture the young in large groups of people, uh, have these thoughts been passed on so that as part of the education of young people, these things are, are spoken of because they have to be spoken of. Yes, for example, Kenya Pediatric Association, uh, Kenya Medical Association, uh, there have been concerted efforts to continuously educate parents. Uh, the Kenya Medical Association uh, provides a member into the Tobacco Control Board. <coughs> the Tobacco Control Board's mandate is to ensure that the message is also passed into schools. Mm. How do they ensure this? Is to ensure that the message is passed into schools so that we have uh, curriculum integrated to tell these young children smoking is harmful but is mm -hmm. it there we we haven't seen personally i haven't seen any mm -hmm. but the message is continuously passed so that, that's why we need a collaborative effort uh, to make sure that we target all sectors of, of do you of think big tobacco tobacco is working hard at ensuring some of these things don't work <laughs> well uh, that's a that's a tough one to 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 to, to <laughs> make to make it's, it's not in their interest to have less smokers. It's a tough one to make, but uh, uh, we, we are not representing in the industry here. Borrowing a leaf from the UK, mm. they are working towards a smoke-free nation by 2030. In so it must in be... In just eight, seven years. It must be a government policy, irrespective of what the industry says. Mm. So it must be a government policy and the government must stand firm and say we must work towards a tobacco-free nation by this time and this is how we'll get to it. So we are calling upon the government and all stakeholders to come on board and relook into this issue further and say how do we assist our smokers quit? Can we have a stop smoking services department? Mm. Can we set those targets and continuously educate our public and uh, eventually we'll uh, get there of course if they are no smoking uh, targets it means that uh, the industry will be hurt in one way or another and the but government must will lose government policy. how much revenue does the government make from just the cigarette industry in well, terms of direct and indirect taxes and in including income tax Yes, the third, is it the third or so largest taxpayer in this country? Absolutely, yes. it is. It is. And that tells you a lot that we must have initiatives arising from the government. Mm. Uh, having known that, yes, this is the third, tax, third largest taxpayer, but we need to protect our public. We need to target the smokers. We need to stop our people from smoking. Mm. And all those studies that have been done in England, Public Health England, the Institute of Psychiatry, the center stage message is one, these alternative products such as vapes are not risk-free. Mm. Two, 
these alternative products such as vape are 95% safer than combustible cigarettes. Three, these products must be regulated so that the youth and children are not enticed. For example, in the US, 2 million youth are using these products and the FDA, Center for Tobacco Products, is really working hard mm. uh, to make sure that they are protecting their youth because they have realized that more and more youth mm. are picking these products. They are picking the products and consuming because it's, 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 it's uh, you know, fun and it's cool to do that. A lot of work needs to be done. Dr. Ari, thank you very much for coming. And of course, we have to maintain this conversation and sustain it, especially for awareness creation across the country. Dr. Michael Karioki is a public health and child health advocate. He's basically saying, you want to quit smoking? The government ought to support you in that. But also, these alternative uh, smoking things that <laughs> you guys are having, they are safer, but they are not the best. And we ought to also avoid them. If you're not a smoker, don't start with vaping. Avoid it.